Hey, everybody. I'm Alicia Purdy, publisher of The Way of the Worshipper. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm reading the Bible through in one year. Today is day 321 of our Bible in a Year reading program. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. We're going to get into God's Word, but first, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button right underneath this video. Logs it into your YouTube library. That's so important. You made a commitment to 365 days in God's Word. You got this. I got this too. We're going to do it, but we want to fulfill it in its entirety. And hitting the thumbs up button, it's a great way that you and I partner together in the gospel. Of course, I say that all the time because it's true. Subscribing to the channel, making sure that you leave a comment if something blesses you or a testimony. Somebody somewhere, someday, they're going to come along and be blessed and find God through the reading of his word. But it also logs it into your YouTube library. That way you don't miss a day. If you're going to do it, you might as well do the whole thing. Watch every video start to finish. Hit the thumbs up button each time you watch one. This is how we partner together. We stay on track. It all matters. Make sure that you also check out resources I have linked below for continued study, knowledge, understanding, and application. It's how believers become strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we learn how to use the weapons Paul talks about in Ephesians 6. Keeping our sword, the sword of a spear that is the word of God, keeping that sharp in us. It's living and active and powerful. And the writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, it discerns the thoughts and the intents of our heart. These are all things that we need to divide between the soul and the spirit and the joint and the marrow, the natural things, the spiritual things. We need that discernment. So we stay sharp through God's word, not just knowledge. Lots of people have that understanding and application. There's a reflection sheet below as well. So many things, the way of the worshiper.com you can find over there resources and printables and Bible study materials and journalism style devotional blog articles I write as a journalist and a believer pulling pieces together from God's word to tell the larger story about what it looks like in an exploration of faith. What does it look like to navigate the darkness with light? What does it look like to walk through suffering with joy? What does it look like to praise and when you can't see or feel or know? So check those out below. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day and for the reading of your word. We lift our hands to you, Father, and thank you for another day. We thank you for breath in our lungs, Father. We thank you for more times with our, our loved ones and our family members and our friends and the tasks that we have in our lives. Lord, as dark as it is, as hard as it is, as bad as it feels sometimes, we lift our hands to you, a good God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that endures forever. Come and have your way here, Lord, whatever it is. Would you show us today, Lord, you have the words to life. We receive them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to get right into our reading today, continuing on in Ezekiel. Remember, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Ezekiel is the watchman. And today we're going to read um, Ezekiel 33 and 34. Ezekiel's wife has died. The prophecies that we've heard over and over and over again. Remember, we are looking in from the future into the past. But for these people, it was from the past into the future. That's what prophecy is. And one of the one of the ways that prophecy operates anyway, and certainly through Ezekiel, God has put words in his mouth about what is coming. And so because we are looking at it from a different angle than these people are walking through it, we have to keep in mind that all the wrath we see is towards sin. And yes, exper people experience that under the old covenant. And even today, they experience what the world is like under the law of sin and death. But these prophecies are actually God in his mercy, constantly, constantly through multiple prophets, sending word on ahead because people have a choice. God laments over the death of the wicked. Yesterday, the last thing we were reading was God was recounting global powers of their day, global, the Assyrians, they were a global power. The Egyptians, there was nobody mightier than they. Babylon in their day, there was, they were a terror. And so we were reading about the Lord was saying all of them were slain by the sword. They died uncircumcised, meaning they died apart from God's presence. And even though they caused terror while they were alive, they were laid in a pit amongst those who were slain. Death comes to us all. That was the whole point. The Lord was saying so much for your mighty power. 
and he weeps over the death of the wicked. So we're picking it up there in in Ezekiel 33 and 34. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, if I bring a sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from among them and set him for their watchman, and he sees the sword come upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, yet did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning delivers his soul. That sums up all the books of the prophets in a nutshell. He who takes warning because faithful God, merciful God, sent word on ahead to everybody, not just his own people, everybody on the planet that existed in this era, that this all was coming for all of time since the days of Noah. He who takes warning delivers his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword come and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and a sword comes and takes a person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from the hand of the watchman. Now, as for you, son of man, I have set you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them from me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hand. Nevertheless, if you on your part warn the wicked to turn from his way and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore, as for you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus you have spoken, saying, surely our transgressions and sins are upon us and we pine away in them. How should we then live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have No pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Therefore, son of man, say to the sons of your people, the righteousness of a righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, He shall not fall by it in the day that he turns from his wickedness, nor shall the righteous be able to be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live and he so trusts in his righteousness that he commits iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But as for that iniquity of his that he has committed, he shall die again. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. And he turns from his sin and does that which is lawful and right. If the wicked man restores a pledge, gives back what he robbed, walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the sons of your people say, the way of the Lord is not right when their way is not right. When the, wicked, when the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die for it. But if the wicked turns from his wickedness and does that which is lawful and right, he shall live by them. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. O house of Israel, I will judge you, everyone, according to his ways. In the twelfth year of our captivity... In the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, one who had escaped out of Jerusalem came to me saying, the city is taken. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening before those who escaped came. He opened my mouth at the time they came to me in the morning. Therefore, my mouth was opened and I was speechless no more. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, those who inhabit these wastes in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was one, yet he inherited the land. But to us that are many, the land has been given for an inheritance. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, you eat meat with the blood in it and lift up your eyes towards your idols as you shed blood. Should you then possess the land? You rely on your sword. You work abominations and every one of you 
defiles his neighbor's wife, should you then possess the land? Thus you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely those who are in the ruins shall fall by the sword. Him who is in the open field, I will give to the beasts to be devoured, and those who are in the forts and in the caves shall die of pestilence, for I will make the land a desolation and a waste, and the pomp of her strength shall cease, and the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, so that none shall pass through. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, when I make the land a desolation and a waste, because of all the abominations which they have committed. As for you, son of man, the sons of the people are talking about you by the walls and in the doorways of the houses. And they speak to one another, each saying to his brother, Come now and hear what the word is that comes forth from the Lord. They come to you as my people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear your words. But they will not do them, for they do the lustful desires of their mouth, and their heart goes after their covetousness. You are to them as a sensual song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear your words, but they do not do them. When this comes to pass, and it is coming to pass, then they shall know that a prophet has been among them. Now we're in Ezekiel 34. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to those shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? You eat the fat and clothe yourself with the wool. You kill those who are fed without feeding the flock. The diseased you have not strengthened, nor have you healed that which was sick, nor have you bound up that which was broken, nor have you brought back this, that which was, was driven away, nor have you sought that which was lost. But with force and cruelty, you have subjugated them. They were scattered because there was no shepherd. They became meat. To all the beasts of the field and were scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Indeed, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and no one searched or sought after them. Do you hear God's heart in this? I'm reading this, and I'm thinking about Jesus, the good shepherd. I'm thinking about when he said, Peter, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. I'm thinking about David who wrote, when the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then this beautiful list, lying down in green pastures, leading me besides still waters. I'm thinking about the parable of Jesus with the, the lost sheep. He goes and gets them. He leaves the 99. I hear God's heart. I see Jesus all the way back here. His righteous anger because he has the heart of a shepherd and he he's listing these things, this stewardship and shepherding of people. Isn't that so beautiful? But this is why he's so mad at these shepherds. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, surely because my flock became prey, my flock even became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock from their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock, nor shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth so that they may not be meat for them. For thus says the Lord God, I, even I, will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so I will seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of the hands of the places where they have been scattered in a cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel their grazing ground shall be. There they shall lie on good grazing ground and in a rich pasture they shall feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock. And I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord God. 
I will seek that which was lost and bring back that which, which was driven away and bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with my judgment. As for you, O oh my flock, says the Lord God, I will judge between the sheep and the cattle, between the rams and the male goats. Does it seem a small thing to you to have eaten up the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pastures? Or that you should drink of the clear waters that you must foul the rest with your feet? As for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I, even I will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you have thrust with side and with shoulder and have pushed all the diseased with your horns until you have scattered them abroad. Therefore, I will save my flock. They shall no longer be prey. And I will judge between one sheep and another. And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them himself and be their shepherd. I, the Lord God, will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I'm grabbing my highlighter in this. What a powerful, I didn't pre-read this. I, when I was just talking about the images was giving me about the accountability of the shepherds, probably because I grew up in the ministry and all my years in the ministry and understanding that shepherding of other people. I haven't read Ezekiel in an extremely long time. And I didn't realize the next page would be about the true shepherd. My heart is so moved. Here we found Jesus. I'm just going to grab my highlighter real quick. Here's the promise. I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. My servant, David, oh, David's dead and gone for a various centuries. What is he talking about? He's talking about the Messiah, the son of David, of the house of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He shall feed them, the good shepherd. Even David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He was prophetically speaking of the Messiah. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be a prince, the prince of peace. I will be the prince. Of, he will be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the wild beasts to cease from the land so they dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. I will cause the showers to come down in their season. They shall be showers of blessing. The trees of the field shall yield its fruit and the ground shall yield its increase and they shall be safe in their land. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hands of those who enslaved them. They shall no longer be a prey to the nations, nor shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely and no one shall make them afraid. I will raise up for them a planting place of renown and no more shall they be consumed with hunger in the land, nor shall they bear the shame of the nations any more. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. As for you, my flock, the flock of my pasture, you are men, and I am God, says the Lord God. So beautiful. That's the end of our reading in the Old Testament. You can go back and reflect on that later in Ezekiel 34. What a wonderful image we have of the accountability and responsibility of shepherds. And the Lord seeing we're all just men. He's God, the true shepherd. He keeps that covenant and fulfills it himself through his own son. Wow, so powerful. All right, let's go over and read in the New Testament. Reading today, Hebrews chapter 13. That's it. It's the last chapter in Hebrews. Hebrews is such an amazing book. I just personally glean so much in my heart. It's just something I love to reflect on the words. They're so practical and yet so strongly worded, so filled with faith. That's the theme of this entire book of Hebrews. Who wrote the book of Hebrews, Lord? I wish we could know. I'm so excited to find out someday. It's one of those questions you're like, when I see God face to face, or maybe we'll just know when we get there, we'll be like, oh, I understand. Oh, it was, oh, I'm rooting for Barnabas. Was it Paul? I don't know. All right. Hebrews chapter 13. When we last left off yesterday, we were reading the writers of, the writer of Hebrews said, he was talking about, he was contrasting Mount Sinai 
which was, you know, renowned amongst God's people. They were, they sing songs about Mount Sinai and all that God did there and how he created a boundary of holiness because his holiness is unapproachable in Ezekiel and the commission of Ezekiel. He said it was like molten metal. The glowing was so intense. It was like molten metal. And there was lightning coming, like everything was moving around and lightning was shooting everywhere. And, you know, God only had like the likeness of a man because of, it was such bright lightness, uh, such brightness. And so God at Mount Sinai, right before the golden calf issue, when Moses was there on Mount Sinai, God had made a boundary and said, you can't come any closer. Not because I'm so distant. It's because I'm so holy. And God in his love created parameters by which we, the people of the dirt, could come near him, even in our wickedness, come as close as we could possibly get through the sacrifices and the tabernacle and the, the censers of the incense and all those wonderful things God did for us in his love and mercy. So you have not come to a mountain. This is what the writer is saying. You're, you're not at a mountain that could be touched and burned with fire. You and I believers, where we were so scared that we begged God to stop speaking because we were scared. He says, you have come to a mountain and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and an innumerable co company of angels, to the church of the firstborn. So it's beautiful, a beautiful image of heaven with Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant sprinkled with blood. And so the last thing we read was he was saying, after all of this, let's be gracious and serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. I think the world could use a little bit more of that now, even in the church reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Picking it up there. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unknowingly. Remember those who are in chains as if imprisoned with them and those who are ill-treated since you are also in the body. Marriage is to be honored among everyone and the bed un defiled. But God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Let your lives be without the love of money and be content with the things that you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can men do to me? Remember those who rule over you, who have proclaimed to you the word of God, Follow their faith, considering the results it has produced in their lives. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away with diverse and strange doctrines. It is a good thing that the heart be strengthened with grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve in the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest on account of sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, th so that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing the reproach that he bore. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they watch over your souls as those who must give an account. Let them do this with joy and not complaining, for that would not be profitable to you. Pray for us, for we trust that we have a good conscience, and in all things are willing to live honestly. But I implore you to pray that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I implore you, brothers to hear this word of exhortation, for I have written to you in few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you if he comes soon. Greet those who rule over you and all the saints. Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. Did you catch that through line from Ezekiel? He is the shepherd of the sheep. There it is. The writer of Hebrews, maybe it was Paul, maybe it was Barnabas, the writer of Hebrews, 
understood. He would have read Ezekiel. He would have understood the promise. He would have read David. And he's still all this time later in this corrupt society that is in jail. The shepherd of the sheep. Hebrews 13, 15. That's our marching orders to t today. Through Christ. Continually. That's an important word. Continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to to his name. The seven Hebrew words for praise, this writer would have known them as well. They are active action words. Praise begins in the heart, but don't trap it there. It comes out of our bodies. It's yes, it's going to feel like a sacrifice. That's the whole point. He said, let's follow Christ outside the camp and do the, do the sacrifice. That's what we are doing. That's what our praise is. There's nothing we can give God, nothing that he could ever use or want but he does desire our praise. Check out resources below about all of this. The seven Hebrew words for praise, what the writer of Hebrews would have been referring to. I've done deep dives in that with my journalism style I do. I want to go deeper too. So it's all there. All right, let's finish up with the Psalm and a Proverb. Reading today, Psalm 115. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto your name give glory for the sake of your mercy and for the sake of your truth. Why should the nations say, where now is their God? But our God is in the heavens, and he does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the works of men's hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Noses, but they cannot smell. Hands, but they cannot feel. Feet, but they cannot walk. Neither can they speak with their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O oh, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great ones. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children, you are blessed of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has given to the children of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time and forevermore. Praise the Lord. There it is. That's that's your psalm for you today. Praise the Lord. He's been mindful of us. Yes, we're blessed. We're not problem free, but we're blessed. It's different. Blessing of God has nothing to do with the way we experience the world. God doesn't define anything like we do. Not life, not death, nothing. We're blessed not problem free, blessed. Okay, let's go over into the Proverbs. Reading today, Proverbs 27 verses 21 and 22. As the refining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Though you should grind a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. Okay, that is it. Day 321 is done. I'm just going to grab this real quick. I want to tell you, praise reveals the truth about you. It reveals the truth about me. If we struggle with praise, that in itself is the revelation. Maybe God is speaking that to you today, speaking it to me, bringing conviction where conviction is due because the refining pot for silver and the furnace for gold those are those smelting pots are to bring impurities to the surface so they can be scraped away. And yeah, the heat is hot. So is a man to his praise. If your heart is to praise the Lord, and you just can't get yourself there. Check out the resources below about the refining fire. Check out the resources below about the sacrifice of praise. You could never outgive God, not even in a sacrifice. Praise should feel like a sacrifice. It's the death of something that needed to die anyway. Okay. 321 done. Hit that thumbs up button underneath this video. Log it into your YouTube library. Check out the resources below. I'm Alicia Purdy, publisher of The Way of the Worshipper. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. We lift our hands to your name in praise and thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O Lord. We are blessed because of you. Thank you that even when we're not problem free, we are blessed because of you, Lord. You walk with us through fire. You shepherd us through valleys. 
You are a good God filled with mercy. We see you, Lord. Whatever it is today that you wanted to show us, Lord, convict us of your truth. You have the words to life and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye.